the public good that government should invest that will enhance our businesses' ability to generate and capture value. We believe that the role of government is to invest in such an infrastructure building, including working with various international organizations in establishing global standards. Businesses then can focus their limited resources on generating business values for their customers. This is how trade trust look like from the technical perspective. Its modular design will ensure minimum coupling and provide us the flexibility to cater for changes in technology for the future. We have since completed version three of the prototype and had successfully demonstrated its ability to transfer ownership of an electronic transfer record or digital document of title between counterparties in Singapore and Rotterdam over a public Ethereum blockchain network. For the very first time, we are witnessing the ability to create an electronic title document on one platform and allow it to be transacted in a peer-to-peer -peer manner across different platforms throughout its life cycle. This is an illustration of how interoperability can be achieved with trade trust. In this example, you can see an invoice originated from a closed loop blockchain ecosystem can be seamlessly shared with a legacy non-blockchain platform of a bank. And at the same time, this same invoice can be verified and consumed by a government run platform. Our approach is different from the traditional way of exchanging data by using a grid data and format via a secure channel. Instead of trusting the channel through which data is received, we allow recipients of data the ability to validate its authenticity and integrity via a public blockchain network. Trade digitalization is truly a global affair, spanning across authorities, associations, and businesses. Since its inception two years ago, our approach to solving the paperless trade problem had garnered interest from many parts of the world. In January this year at Davos, um, World Trade Organization, uh, World, World Economic Forum um, event, a multilateral MOI was in comprises multinationals from both East and West to further our effort in digitalizing trade. Our work is currently published under open source license at GitHub. We encourage any interested party to explore and make use of it if it's of value to you. We are now reaching out to the global community to walk the journey with us. Thank you. Hello. Hi all, uh, Jason here from uh, Veritech. Siyong, can you hear me, right? Yes. From my side? Okay. Yes. So it's, uh, okay, now it's my turn. So uh, thanks uh, for attending and thanks IMDA for giving me the chance to materialize trade trust on our application itself. So let's take a look at what we have done. Okay. So what you see here is uh, the application that we have created to materialize trade trust. So in order to understand better what is trade trust and what trade trust can do, let's take a look at how this application is being used. Okay, so to give an example. Let's take a look at this uh, document here that I opened up. This Accra document. Okay, so when I click in, you can see that there is two, uh, some key information. For example, original file name is issued on the trade trust. Transaction hash is very important. This transaction hash right, is a unique hash that is specific to the document itself. Okay. JSON file is a raw data file that you can share. And later I will show to you how it, it can be used to verify on trade trust. Okay, let's take a look at the document itself, the PDF document. So over opening the document, right, you notice something that is uh, very specific to blockchain. On the blockchain itself, the most important thing about tracking and protecting the security of the document is first, the document must be unique. Okay, so just as I mentioned, you have the 
unit address, the spark contract address or the document itself. Second, you must know who is the person that sent out the document or the originator. So in this case, you can see the wallet address, which is unique to me, and also the email address itself. Okay, And this will form the page where you set, get all the key information on the document itself. Just take note, it's on the document. It's not on the contents of the document. It's on the property of the document itself. And following it will be the exact documents that uh, information on the document. So it's actually very simple. Basically, what TradeSharp does is it helps to protect the document property to a way that nobody can amend anything to it. And the best thing is that Trade Trust has created a decentralized on the Ethereum itself, serving as a decentralized public neutral party to verify all the documents that you have. Okay, the best way to verify is to use a raw data file, the TT file or the JSON file, which is what we, we call it. Okay. So I've saved the file. So this is the official Trade Trust website. This is the JSON file. I just need to drag, put it in. Okay. It will tell you that, see, the document has not been tampered with. Okay, has to be identified. And you can actually see the full documents below. So this means we have effectively created, uh, IMD has effectively created a system on trade trust that, that makes a document to be more authentic than an original document for one. Second is that this document itself can be easily shared, sent by email to anybody. So now I demo to you how easy it is to protect a document on the trade trust. Okay. So two ways to do it. One way is to email to the trade trust or official email using a registered account. The other way is just upload the documents. So in this case, I upload the certificate of origin. Okay, the documents is here and I sign it in. And when I sign in, okay, I issue the documents onto Trade Trust. So this document will now be put into the blockchain, the properties itself where everybody can authenticate and check the authentication, the security of the documents itself. Sorry, take a, take a while. See, now I effectively put this document onto Trade Trust. So what does this mean on the general business model, on the general trade model? Okay, let me show you what we plan to do with what we have done for Trade Trust document. Okay, currently we have a project that we are working very closely with uh, IMD and with, and with ACRA to allow ACRA documents to be able to be accepted by uh, China. So instead of the normal way where you have to print the original document, get the original document, print it, get it notarized, send to the China embassy, and then dispatch over to China and get so everything done. Now, if this process, we can get it work on a G2G basis, it means that any trade trust document, we can directly send to China CA. And what China CA need to do is just to translate. So it will means that the saving in the cost and saving in time can cut down from six to 40 working days down to only maximum two working days. And the cost per document, right, from a $215 to whatever I, I whatever I can charge you. So in this case, we say that about $50 per document. Okay, and on top of that, okay, uh, Verite is one of the, I think it's worth, it, it is uh, the first company to put food security on blockchain. So recently, we are lucky enough to be able to get a project, uh, food security sandbox project with ST. And 
what we hope to achieve under this is that all documents, be it your certificate of origin, free field cert, invoice, agreement, BL, can be stored and tracked under very secure. And this document will be protected under trade trust. It means that these documents, if we, with IMDA, with Sion plan, as we move ahead, this digital document can be legally recognized as a form of a document that China side can recognize. So we don't even need to send any original documents for custom clearance anymore. And with that, I think we can save a lot of time and money in the process itself. Okay, so uh, that's all for my uh, demo. Thanks. Hello, hello, Jason. Yeah. I think thank you very much, Jason. Um, right. I uh, just want to encourage. Um, let's just move on to the you know Q and A segment. Um, and if our participants have any questions, uh, please feel free to um raise your uh, hand up now or if should you prefer to uh, you can type in your question uh, with the Q&A function below. Uh, maybe I'll just uh, start the ball rolling first uh, with, with kind of a, a question that may be on the mind of our participants. Uh, so Sing Yong or Jason, maybe from your experience, how would you recommend that uh, companies take the first step towards uh, digitalizing uh, their, their trade processes and what kind of uh, government assistance or grants uh, are available and how do you get you know, started on assessing this? Uh, I think your, uh, your one long sentence uh, involved many questions in there. <laughs> so I'll just uh, try to simplify it. Um, uh, in the first place, if a company is seriously looking in the area of trade digitalization, then I think uh, it's very important that number one is to identify what causes you the most pain. What is the most painful uh, problem that you wanted to solve and cannot be solved until today, especially in the area of uh, trade documentation. This is number one. So number two, then uh, once you know where your pains are, then you will know uh, where to look for your medicine, right? So, um, um, typically, when let's say a company or a partner wanted to explore into trade trust, the first thing uh, that we uh, usually advise them is to actually go to our trade trust uh, website, uh, which I, I think I can uh, provide in the... Um, Jason, do you mind help me type the uh, URL so that everyone can see? It's okay, called okay. docs.tradetrust.io, D-O-C-S dot tradetrust.io. So this is a, a starting point that uh, you can actually um, um, get to, to actually start exploring trade trust. And typically um, when you talk about exchanging document between um, businesses for a particular trade transaction, um, you can also visualize that there are typically uh, two types of documents that are involved. One document, one class of document is what we call a B, B2B document that is generated uh, by businesses for that particular trade transaction. For example, invoice is one of them. Um, it's a very common uh, B2B, um, B2B document. The other class of document will be uh, those documents involving government. For example, your um, um, phytosanitary certificate or certificate origin, uh, specifically preferential certificate origin. This is typically issued by the government. So um, then once you have identified the list of uh, uh, documents involved, then you can uh, look at how can we actually um, digitize uh, this uh, document. And of course, um, if, if anyone um, has any problem or, or find um, challenging, uh, you can always uh, uh, look for my team and uh, we can actually uh, help you uh, with uh, recommending certain ideas. So in terms of government funding, I believe um, um, our sister agency, EIG, 
runs uh, various uh, government uh, uh, program that uh, provide funding to businesses as well as um, not only big businesses but also um, um, SMEs. So um, government funding is uh, another separate conversation which uh, we can talk for another half a day. So, but a good point to start is actually to go to uh, ESG's website to look for the type of funding available to companies for different aspects. Uh, I just give you an example, like for example, um, I'm in the actually run a funding program called SME Go Digital, where the government actually um, um, subsidizes the kind of digital solutions that SME uh, 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 buy or subscribe to. Mm. Right. Uh, thank, thank you, thank you, Sinyong, very much for <laughs> answering all those uh, mini questions in, in one answer. Um, I think um, we have uh, my my next question is maybe for uh, Jason Lim. Uh, I think Jason earlier mentioned that uh, certain he mentioned certain figures of the cost of you know applying through the traditional processes and how this could be reduced. Um, it's also said that you know doing online we can save pretty much uh, uh, time as well and therefore reduce uh, time to uh, market for for some of our businesses. Is there a kind of does Jason have a sense of ballpark like you know how many man hours do these processes potentially save companies uh, in a year or in a month, and or how do all these costs and manpower uh, savings stack up over the long run? Okay. Okay, the biggest cost currently for trade deals with the trade documents itself. So the trade documents uh, will be documents like uh, Certificate of Origin, Free Sales Cert, OBL, and all these are original documents that you have to be notarized or it has to be original copy. It had, had to be certified. Then it has to be carried over to China side or to other countries for use. By having digital documents that it is as authentic as the original document, it actually will save all these costs. Give a simple example. The cost of notarization in Singapore is easily $75. To get it acknowledged by the China Embassy, another $75. To send by FedEx over, another $50. And not to mention the waste of time. And the biggest problem you face is that if there's a mistake in the original document, for example, I'm doing a shipment to China, I type in the wrong product name, okay? And this document arrived in China by uh, FedEx. Then my forwarder receive it and find that description is wrong. So what can you do? You have to send the original document back to us. We have to use the original document, go back and amend it again, get another original document to send over to China. And this cost loss in time and money is not just from document itself. Just imagine the shipment that have to be sit at the port waiting for you to clear the custom just because of a small mistake in the paperwork. So this itself, this process itself has never changed for the last, I would say at least 80 years. Away. So we are at a very good time to create a change in this process through the deployment of blockchain through government support. Yeah. So that, does that answer your question, Jason? Yeah. Yes, 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 yeah. it does. Uh, thank you very much. Um, well, we we um, have no uh, raised hands yet. Uh, I think I think Sinyong gave a, a, a written response to a, to to one of the questions that just came in. But maybe Sinyong, you want to elaborate a bit verbally as well. Uh, I think our question was from uh, is whether trade trust is a government initiative, and whether the government is uh, guarantees the authenticity, security, and privacy. Of the okay, um, just to elaborate, uh, we see trade trust as a form of uh, utility, uh, a digital utility to be exact, where our government should actually build uh, for businesses to use. Um, that is why it's a government initiative. Um, it is used for uh, businesses to facilitate the exchange of um, business document in such a manner that the whatever that is being exchanged can be guaranteed of its authenticity and integrity 
And this authenticity and integrity is being um, um, guaranteed or assured by the underlying technology that we use, which is uh, trade trust. Um, I can actually come up with a fictitious uh, uh, invoice, for example, put it onto a trade trust network, it's still an invoice. There's no way that the government can guarantee whether this invoice uh, relates to a real business transaction or not. We only know, we only know that this invoice is put up by me. That's all. And for security and privacy, it has got a few dimensions. I think the uh, most often asked question when we share about trade trust is that how can my company data be protected from the public if you guys are using a public blockchain? Uh, this is where the one of the key design principles come into play where I have just earlier shared that we adopt the principle of data off chain. That means what is being published on the public blockchain are just hashes. Uh, hashes can be a, a, it's a technical term, but in a layman way of uh, explaining hashes, we can, we can use the term fingerprint. Let me say, for example, if today I have a document I want to send to Jason, uh, Jason I uh, actually uh, register the fingerprint of my document on the public blockchain. That is all I do. I will still forward to uh, Jason uh, in whichever way that I'm exchanging document with him, him now. Maybe uh, I email him as an email attachment. This is one way. Or there could be other way. For example, I uh, load it into a thumb drive and I I uh, mail in this thumb drive, it could be another way. So this is a flexibility that actually we put into the uh, Tetris design. So that um, we try to allow businesses to adopt this technology without significant changes to their business process. I think this is uh, one, of, one of the most con uh, important consideration. Because uh, everyone in the international supply chain know that it involves many parties along a very long chain. So it's not reasonable to expect that everyone along the chain can digitalize their process uh, overnight or change their business process overnight. So this is a reason why the interoperability between human and machine, between different media as well as between different um, digital uh, ecosystem. Uh, comes into play. So I hope I've uh, managed to answer your question. Yes, yes, very much. Thank you, uh, Sinyong. Uh, I, I believe so, at least from, from my perspective. I think our, our questions are continuing to roll in, mostly um, through the, the, the Q&A function. Uh, if any of our participants want to post your questions directly as well, just a reminder, you can uh, use the raise your hand button. Um, but I think we, we have a couple of questions um, on, on uh, whether trade trust is, how, how does trade trust fit within the national trade platform or ASEAN single window uh, kind of ecosystem? Okay, you can uh, envision uh, trade trust as a uh, underlying uh, component that link different platform to facilitate interoperability. So NTP is a platform. Uh, ASEAN Single Window SW is another different uh, platform, but a, a, a somewhat different platform uh, if you are into it in detail. So one key important point that uh, everyone need to take away from today's presentation is if you cannot remember anything that I said, just remember one thing, trade trust is not a platform but trade trust help to link all the platform so that they can interoperate with one another. Mm. Thanks, so Sinyong. I go on to the next uh, question about what yeah. are the charges, uh, am I wrong document, are there penalty? There's no charges of using uh, trade trust. Uh, as I earlier shared, we are actually um, giving out trade trust and license it for any business to use under open source which means that um, any businesses, uh, I just quote one of my uh, friends who say, 
I can just copy, uh, download, and use shamelessly without paying a single cent. And this is how uh, open source uh, works. So I come to the question about do we need to join as a member? No, you just download and use. And you are a member. Or you, if, if let's say you download the trade test component, have your IT uh, guys incorporate into your own in-house system, then you are already trade trust enabling yourself. And this point is very important. Why we we are not designing a network or a platform that require membership. Because this is exactly how international trade works. Anyone can trade with any other without a third party approval. So which means that you just download the software and use full stop. So there's a question relating to trade trust involved multiple country. You are absolutely right. Is trade trust recognized by other jurisdictions? We are working on it. That is the reason why uh, we have been actively participating in international forum under the UN, uh, under the uh, World Economic Forum, as well as WTO, to promote this concept of uh, cross-border recognition of a uh, of business document both by the government as well as businesses using a common uh, uh, globally recognized or internationally accepted standard. Yes, currently we are in discussion with many, many countries. Uh, what you can see, um, we have just signed uh, that, that um, digital economy partnership agreement with Chile and um, New Zealand. Under such an agreement, paperless trade is a very big topic. Uh, if you are uh, uh, curious, you can actually go to um, the um, Google about DPA, download a copy of the agreement, then you will see the languages that we actually put inside the uh, paperless trade uh, chapter. Of course, this is just uh, another step towards the end goal of uh, allowing document to be recognized cross-border. Is, is, is actually work in progress. So there's uh, one person who said that my company does not, uh, does not do a lot of export. Does it uh, help us with local businesses? Yes, of course. Uh, say for example, even if you do not do exports, um, do you uh, deal with the bank a lot? Do, um, do you take, um, do you uh, do trade financing with the bank? And typically when uh, such a transaction or financing transaction uh, with a bank, um, you will definitely run into a situation where you need to provide a lot of supporting document. And typically all these supporting document uh, um, is not produced by yourself, but by your uh, other uh, business partner or even government agencies. So we say trust, um, instead of uh, having all this uh, printed on the hard copy and courier, you can just email and uh, as an attachment directly to the bank. And uh, we are also um, in the process of um, working with the bank to allow uh, their banking portal to um, maybe accept a trade trust document or trade trust file. So this is uh, part of our work also. If it's free, then why is the business model for trade trust? Trade trust is a public good and a digital utility. So the business model does not really relate to trade trust per se, but the business model really is the application that the businesses build on top of trade trust to generate business value. And the business model actually relates to how you monetize, monetize this uh, business value that you generate from using trade trust. Or bank will accept uh, if we are using trade trust when sending uh, all documents for DP. This is the target we are working towards. It's still work in progress. 
um, one of the important um, um, document within this DP is if, if let's say your DP uh, involve original BL, uh, then uh, we will have to um, wait for uh, second half of next year where we uh, updated our electronic transaction act. Because today the reason why uh, BL submitted to the bank uh, need to be original from the shipping line is because under our law, uh, uh, BL is excluded in uh, ETA as a negotiable instrument. Okay, for the roadmap, uh, you can refer to the docs.tradetrust.io. We have a technical roadmap and um, Usage currently for ASEAN, yes, uh, we have in our plan, but I think uh, it's more important that we also at the same time engage our three key trading uh, nations. And um, it's not very difficult to know that uh, who our key trading uh, uh, partners are. So I hope I've uh, answered all the questions at one go. <laughs> yes, yes, you're on quite a road there, Senor. Um, I think we still have a bit of time if uh, any questions want to come out. Uh, meanwhile, I think uh, just uh, as, as our audience kind of ponder through your responses, I just want to highlight that, you know, IMDA does have a page on the digital economy. Uh, this is, uh, okay, the trade there's a, yeah. there's, sorry, uh, there's one very interesting question uh, by this gentleman, Guang Ming Wang, Mr. Wang or Mr. Guang? Um, I'm not sure how you, uh, if, please pardon me if I pronounce your name wrongly. Okay, the question says, the biggest problem on transnational document exchange is the proof of two copy, which I fully agree with you. Example, the company financial statement, when we upload the trade trust, in order to prove that it's authentic, we need an authority to certify and be recognized either in or across country. Do we have the process of document authentication in place for trade trust? You remember the um, um, demo that Jason has just showed you after my presentation? It involves ACRA's uh, uh, BIS profile. It falls into the same situation as your question. BIS profile is issued by ACRA, but it's used by private uh, company to uh, 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 sort of like a, in other country to prove the authenticity of this business in Singapore. So our end goal, our end goal, uh, we are still working on it. Uh, our end goal is if let's say, for example, Accra can issue their business profile in trade trust. Effectively, any businesses can make use of this uh, trade trust file issued by ACRA, have it submitted to an authority oversee, and the oversee authority can recognize that actually it's from ACRA. Because today, what the businesses uh, do is to photostat or even print, it, print a, a web copy from ACRA website and submit. That is the reason why you need this certified true copy. But if we can digitally prove that this file actually come from Accra, then uh, what else need to be proven? So I hope I have uh, answered this question uh, in a very clear manner. Yeah, thanks, Senor. I, I think uh, um, there's a question, but you may have covered a bit about you know, how um, your business partner need not necessarily be on trade trust, uh, and there is a, a, a way to kind of, uh, uh, for, for these two systems to, to communicate. Uh, um, both. Yeah. Uh, sure, sure. Because uh, we, we also have a, a, a standard uh, trade trust website that uh, allow anyone that uh, receive a trade trust file to validate its authenticity and integrity. And all this information you can actually uh, find out from docs.tradetrust.io. 
Okay, thanks very much. So, so I think apart from from these two uh websites which we are showing here, the key one you mentioned is docs trade trust io, which uh, yes. I'm kidding in the chat box. So we can encourage uh, everyone to check that website out. Uh, uh, around, <laughs> and uh, remember to give us uh, whatever feedback you have. Uh, if you think that things are not clear, do write to us, and uh, we make sure that uh, we will improve it. Because uh, they, the trade trust is still Actually, trade trust is not a, a end product per se. It's a journey, and we are still working on this journey. Yeah. But but uh, yeah, very exciting one, uh, Senor. Um, and just for the benefit of our participants, uh, uh, this is uh something we are doing uh a couple of weeks later as well. Uh, uh for our webinar the next. See, uh, episode in this series on, on cross border trade and data flows, including data protection issues. Um, and um, just to highlight the, the, the broader kind of SVF initiative called Global Connect, which also deals with um, international advisory, market information, facilitation, and business matching. Uh, yeah, and, and I think um, we have. Uh, uh, Covered most of the questions. Uh, I don't think there are, there doesn't seem to be any more questions. But again, um, uh, if we are happy, if we are happy, happy to do so, we will sh uh, share both uh, SPF contact point and and some and the IMDA one as well for businesses to kind of provide the feedback on on their experiences using Trade Trust and what they kind of uh, wish to see uh, in the future. Um, but before we kind of end this webinar, uh, maybe I would. Have to um, ask our participants to share with us uh, uh, their quick feedback uh, on today's session. Uh, if you can have the poll question now, just three short ones uh, on, on how they found today and, and what they would like to hear more on in the future. Uh, which, which everyone should see now. Um, so a very big thank you once again uh, uh, to, to Sing Yong and Jason uh, and also to our participants. Uh, you have been a very active audience. There were a lot of questions, I think 10 plus almost 20 questions. So thank you very much, Sing Yong, for patiently uh, oh. going through all of them. Uh, we feel heartened by, by this active participation. And uh, as I said, uh, we, we let's, let's share, uh, let's please continue to write in to us and provide us your feedback. I think both SBF and MDA are interested to hear about your experience and uh, uh, kind of more uh, about what you want Jason, to Jason, I can also forward you a copy of my deck so that you can uh, distribute to your members and the participants uh, if, if they want to have a copy. Yes, yes, and definitely we'll do that in the, our follow-up mm -hmm. email. Sure. All right, thank you all very much. Hope to see you thank again. Bye-bye.